Hi, I'm here today with uh, Victoria Owen, who is the Chief Librarian at the University of Toronto Scarborough, and that's in Canada. And she's representing IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, where she's the Chair of the Copyright and Other Legal Matters Committee. Uh, we're here at uh, it's July 4th. We've been uh, in a week of meetings at, at the World Intellectual Property Organization on Copyright Exceptions. Victoria, could you tell me what happened this week as far as library copyright exceptions? Yes, we had, uh, Jamie, we had a number of discussions. There were, doc there were two documents that uh, were formally accepted at WIPO that we discussed. So there was um, a submission on principles from the United States, and then there was the document on the 11 um, topics that have been under discussion regarding exceptions and limitations for libraries. So the member states had some significant and substantive discussions on uh, the American document, so they went, in, they went through it uh, item by item, and then subsequent to that, the member states went through the uh, document that had all of the topics, the 11 topics that are being considered uh, regarding limitations and exceptions for libraries and archives. So the discussions went very well. There were it was a mix of responses among the, um, the member states. There were some examples of, of their own laws. There were uh, requests for um, an international framework from other countries that would allow them to, to do certain things, for example, to um, to preserve their materials, to lend their materials across borders. There was discussion about legal deposits. Any, all, the, all of the topics had their um, were, were, were taken in turn and discussed. So there was a, there was a range of responses, and there's a sense of momentum and, and engagement from member states. So I think that was really very positive. The meeting uh, at the last SSCR ended up without a decision, and there was a uh, objections from the European Union for text-based negotiations. Uh, did you feel that things were different this meeting as, as regard to the position of the European Union in, in discussing these issues or any other, any other member state? Well, I think the European Union certainly engaged in the discussions. Um, there, uh, whether they advanced them or not, I, I don't know. They had um, they had support in some ways where there, where, the, where there were directives. They itemized that there were directives in place. And um, certainly we looked at the text that the Americans had um, proposed and we looked at the proposals that, the other proposal that was on the table. So in some manner it seemed that we did do a text-based um, consideration. So it was, I, I guess, I wasn't here at the last meeting, but I, I would imagine that this is certainly had an advancement over the dialogue that happened at the last meeting from what, I, from what I heard, because there were no conclusions from that meeting regarding that part of the, um, the agenda. Well, thank you. Uh, do you think there's a, uh, a, a good prospect or a kind of a mediocre, weak prospect for, for, for WIPO to develop standards that could be some kind of global standards for minimum exceptions, for copyright exceptions as they relate to libraries and archives? I believe that there is, uh, there's certainly evidence in a number of those topics that they need to go forward through an international framework to be effective. I, the things that have cross-border impacts really do need an international standard, otherwise it will really interrupt the flow of information and the, and the easy exchange of information across borders. So there are some things that certainly a national focus could help alleviate some of those problems. However, I think that there are um, a few issues that really do need international attention and they need an instrument so that there is a, a, a harmonization around the world to allow for that flow of information. What would you uh, say to people that are watching this process about the next meeting, the SSCR, which I guess will be in what, December? Yes, we're looking forward to a December meeting. I think that... Uh, should, should, who, who, who would you like to be in the room for the December discussion? Well, I'd like a lot of member states to be here and ready to have substantive, substantive discussions. I'd like, um, you know, the library and archives community has been coming. They should continue to come. I think the member states have been looking for examples and how it applies. They really, I think, um, 
in good faith are trying to understand what the problems are and how they might be solved, which is what I think some of those examples that the member states are giving are helping them. Um, so I, I think that the more help we can give, and I know I've heard from the Canadian delegation that some of the documents that were prepared the last time were very helpful in understanding what the issues are and moving them forward. So I think a range of, of things, experiences and on the ground, certainly on the ground experiences that we're having that interferes with uh, the flow of information can help people understand why the international instrument is needed and, and what the problems are that we're trying to deal with. Uh, Victoria, what would you say to author groups that have appeared at, at WIPO that have been critical of library exceptions? Well, I think library exceptions are, are really don't... Library exceptions, for the moment well, now, have, are, are creatures of national statutes and national legislation. So in the very drafting of those measures and, and, and laws, they have taken into consideration, they are already balanced, they have taken into consideration the rights of the authors and, and other rights holders as they balance it, because there is a quid pro quo there, there is the protection of the creators, certainly there is, and most of the most of the rights reside with the creators, but there are small carve-outs for society's benefit. Otherwise, we wouldn't need a law that was in place because Parliament or whatever the national legislature is has to balance the right of the users. So that's what I would say, that there is there is a requirement to have the libraries and archives represented there to give the public interest in the dissemination of information the ability to perform. So how, would, how, how, how would you compare the interest of authors to publishers in this debate. I mean, do they are they are they the same in terms of the positions they take or the interests they have, or they, are there differences? I think there. Well, I think there's a. There are there are many similarities uh, uh, between those two groups. I think overall they have. Uh, they're certainly hesitant to support limitations and. and uh, exceptions for libraries and archives, but they often are the beneficiaries of them, they're citizens. I mean, these rights are for citizens, and they're all citizens of a country. So they can benefit from them, and creators benefit from them. So I think there is sometimes a misunderstanding. I think authors can and often do uh, understand the process more from a, a personal perspective in, in seeking out the information and working with librarians. You can hardly open a book that doesn't thank a librarian for their help. But I think the publishers are looking at it differently. They do have a different perspective. They're looking at the, the economics of it and the, that economic input impact on their own bottom line. But, you know, libraries and archives deal in public goods. And public goods, by definition, are non-commodifiable. So we are talking about two different things. We're talking about something for the benefit of society, and then we're talking in terms of the authors and creators and publishers about economic benefits. So there's, it's, it's like oil and water a little bit, but it's a very little bit of oil and a lot of water. Thank you, Victoria. Is there anything you'd like to add before I turn the camera off? Well, I think it's, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm very hopeful about uh, the positive thrust of these meetings and uh, I look forward to uh, further discussions in, in December. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs>